Uh, Hi again. <laughs> Sorry, Shura, just give me one moment. Hi again, everybody. Uh, uh, it's a total pleasure and honor to have Shura Grosberg here with us for the uh, finale today. Uh, Shura, please tell us about Living Histories. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me for this series. I feel honored and uh, this honor is probably uh, not warranted because I am hardly a biological physicist, as you will see from my presentation, but there is no way back. So I will deliver the talk whether I am a biological physicist or not. So I will tell you about my trajectory in these four different spaces, in, the, in real geographical space, space of education, physics, and teaching. So as far as geography, I was born in Moscow, then Soviet Union, and then I moved to, to this country where I work uh, partly in Boston, Minneapolis, and now presently in New York. And I realized, thinking about it, that in spherical coordinates, the radius of this travel is fixed. Angle theta hardly changed, and on the angle phi, and interestingly, the whole trajectory is centered about around Iceland somehow, uh, as you see in this map. More seriously, in the space of education, uh, it gives me particular pleasure to show to you the picture of my favorite high school teacher, physics teacher, uh, we in Russia called her Esfir Grigorievna. Uh, so this is she. She was incredibly encouraging teacher for me. And I have to tell you that uh, she sort of taught me, believe in yourself, uh, try do it, do it your own hands and so on. But uh, she did it in a very, very non, non uh, straightforward way. She was frequently criticizing me and telling me that you are doing wrong and wrong and wrong. And this repeated uh, criticism had exactly the opposite effect. It had the effect of encouragement. So as future teachers, you may want to think about for instance, uh, once I uh, came to her with the thought that uh, I realized somehow that uh, all this story about Galileo and Giordano Bruno and others who were Copernicus who were fighting whether Earth cycling the sun or cycling sun circling the earth, what's the difference? There is the question of reference frame. I realized this and with my eyes open, I came to her and said, what's the, what's the problem? And she looked at me and said, okay, sit down here. She realized that it was a serious question, not the question of whether I received the C or B or whichever grade. And she was explaining it to me for maybe two hours, and it was incredibly important. On this background, I should also tell you that for some big political reasons in Soviet Union, I didn't have any biology in school, whatever, no biology. So this is a good start to become a biophysicist, as you can realize. Then I uh, went to Moscow University, which is pictured here, and the most important thing that happened to me in Moscow University is that I started working with this man, Ilya Mikhailovich Lifshitz. Uh, Lifshitz was one of the most famous theoretical physicists in the Soviet Union. He was the brother of famous Landau and Lifshitz Lifshitz. And by all accounts, he was actually a better physicist. And he had a number of uh, great discoveries uh, and so on. Recently in 2017, he turned uh, 100 and we wrote with Bert Halperin and John Singleton, we wrote a paper 
about him in physics today, so I encourage you to, to read about it. One of, of his interesting statements, uh, he was asked, who should become a theorist? And his answer is written here. If you feel clumsy and break equipment in the lab, this is not sufficient reason to become a theorist. There should be some positive motivation. And in my case, there was a positive motivation uh, because I did not break, break anything. I was uh, doing all sorts of experiments with pleasure, but I loved the feeling that writing uh, equations on the paper tells me something about the world. It's incredible feeling. However, my education trajectory was not straightforward because I was not admitted to uh, grad school. Better to say to what is called in Russia aspirantura because of anti-Semitic uh, 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 policies in the Soviet Union, I was just refused bluntly and I had to go to, to work uh, to be employed in some obscure place, but luckily Lipschitz agreed to work with me without any formal arrangement whatsoever. I just worked with him and uh, informally prepared my PhD and, and Doctor of Science thesis and then everything else. Uh, so speaking about my trajectory in physics, uh, by now I have maybe 200 or 250, I never counted, uh, paper published and they all feel like children for me. But nevertheless, main stops on my trajectory are listed here. Uh, so coil globule transition or polymer collapse, fresh globule, which recently became uh, popular as a model of chromatin. Then uh, I worked, uh, and by the way, it was called, we called it fresh globule because it was discovered uh, at the time in Soviet Union when food was not easily available and fresh food was in short supply. So we thought that fresh globule was a nice uh, name for it. But then uh, Journal de Physique said, no, it's a jargon, you cannot call it like this. Uh, okay, so then heteropolymers, charges, electrostatics, not active systems, those are uh, topics on which I happen to work, but maybe more interesting, I'll tell you what kind of, <coughs> what kind of arguments I find enjoyable. I actually want to resonate to the st statement by Maha that the most interesting th things to work on are interesting things. And here is the enjoyable type of argument. This argument is something that uh, came to my mind when I was probably 10 years old or something like this. And I was asked the following problem. Presently, father is 32 years old and son is five years old. When will it happen that father will be twice as old as his son? Yes, you can call it X and write equation, blah, blah, blah. But, but I was thinking about it and the idea came to me that in fact, as they both age, the difference between them doesn't change. It is a conserved quantity. I of course I didn't know this word conserved quantity, but it blew me away. This idea that therefore, Son should become as old as the difference between them. And the beauty of this argument is something that is addictive to me. I am addicted to this kind of arguments. So much more seriously, for instance, in the work about not tightening, it's an incredibly diff difficult problem. But once you realize that the knot itself has this structure that you can imagine as this inflated cube, it becomes easy, almost as easy as the story about father and son. Similarly, when I was working on this problem of DNA capturing by a nanopore, 
So the idea was some experimentalists came up with the idea that if you add salt on one side of, of this membrane, then DNA goes there much faster. So salt, your instinct would be if you add salt, then all electric field is screened. Goodbye, no electric field. So it came to later to realize that there is an electric current. And although there is screening, but the current, of course, is not screened, and there is electric field which is not screened, and then everything falls in line, almost as in the case of uh, of father and son. So it's just the story of this beautiful, simple argument that excites. Now, my trajectory in the space of teaching, in uh, in uh, the interest of full disclosure, I should tell you that. Both of my parents, my father and my mother, were teachers, mathematics teachers to be specific. And actually my grandfather and grandmother were also teachers. Uh, and so I sort of inherited the interest in teaching, uh, encapsulating the statement that student is not a sack to be filled, but a torch to be lit. Uh, I don't know who said that, but I like it. Uh, very much. In Soviet Union, I was teaching uh, for a while under pseudonym. I told you I was working in some obscure place, and the director of this place was paid as a professor, but he did not want to teach, and I was teaching instead of him, and he was paid. This was the arrangement. But I was happy because I was received by teaching experience. Uh, so, I think in the interest of time, I will skip uh, some of my ideas how to, how to teach, except I will tell you that I, should, I would advise anyone who starts teaching, never use any notes, because you should encourage your students to uh, do it on, on their own. So some random notes to finish. Uh, maybe the most important question is what is the role of theories in biophysics? And I would say that we should actually work to establish in biophysics a culture of theoretical thinking, which is so highly reputed in physics, but in biological physics, sort of physicists, uh, theoretical physicists are considered to be uh, only useful if they perform some auxiliary functions. And I think this should change and I would work to change it. Uh, so I should stop at this point and that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Shura, for that very inspiring talk. Um, does anybody want to unmute and go ahead and ask a question or two? Um, I I can uh, if if you don't mind I I can I can jump in with a question. Thank you. It was a really wonderful talk. Um, I was wondering if you could say a little bit more about the political reasons why biology was not taught in high school. I'm wondering if it if it, if it related to Lysenko and evolution. Yes, it is exactly related to Lysenko. Sorry, uh, I am not sufficiently old to uh, collide with Lysenko directly, but the story is that uh, maybe I will say one sentence for others to understand. In 1949, the man uh, named Lysenko uh, initiated sort of a pogrom in Soviet biology and uh, actually genetics was uh, effectively uh, forbidden inside Soviet Union for 20 years. And accordingly, no biologists were taught in Soviet Union. And th at the time when I was in school, uh, already, it was already realized that something is wrong and, and people should teach real biology. But there were no teachers to do it. And so the compromise was just to, to throw biology away from the school curriculum. That's, I can also tell you as an anecdote, 
uh, about it. But, uh, I personally heard the word DNA only when I already graduated from the university. I heard it from, from Lipschitz about whom I told. Uh, so it was just, just terrible. Wow. Thank you. That's, yeah. Politics and science don't Politics and do science. not mix well. <laughs> as, yeah. As we learn, I guess, every, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 